Like the hive queen herself, I will be forming a Tyranid hive tyrant from toxic goo. My name's Angela and you're watching Hobby Night. It's finally happened. I have joined the 3D printing revolution and bought my first 3D printer. Now this is entirely thanks to my patrons and supporters on a website that I cannot talk about here on YouTube. But to any of you that were the ones who supported this and helped me get this printer, thank you very, very much. So what did I end up getting? Well, I got the Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra. I debated between this particular printer and a couple other printers online for a little while, but ultimately found that this one was very well reviewed and extremely well supported. So I was like, you know what? That's good enough for me. That's the one I'm gonna go with. Now, in addition to the 3D printer, I also picked up a couple of other tools to help make everything easier. I got the wash station, which we've already filled with alcohol to do our cleaning and Chaos Cultist has been using it to do a little bit of testing. But today I'm going to be doing the printing all on my own. The other thing that I got was the UV curing station to just make curing all of our pieces that much faster. We don't have to put them out in the sun and wait. We can just do it in here. It'll be nice and quick and easy. Now, additionally, I want to talk about where we're keeping all of our tools and safety materials. And that is right here on the shelf that has easy access to the printer, cleaning station, and curing station. Additionally, for anybody that is concerned about ventilation, don't worry. The space that we're in, which is my gaming space, which you might recognize from my studio tours, is got these really big doors on them, which open up, which means we can ventilate the space and get rid of all those nasty chemical smells pretty easily. I'm not super worried about it. And then for anybody who might be concerned of like, wait, but those are really big windows. Aren't these machines gonna be in the sun? Isn't that bad for things? Don't worry. We don't actually get any direct sunlight on that table. And even if we did, I've actually been using a towel to cover the machine if I'm ever concerned about it. So what are we actually going to be printing today with this brand new fancy spanking machine? Well, you see, I've been using my Tyranids recently. I took them to a combat patrol and that's a nice small force, but I want to expand it into a 2000 point force. And there's one unit in particular that I've really been wanting to add to my faction, but GW's prices on this unit are a bit more than what I want to pay. So now that I have a printer, I figured why not go to my mini factory and see what alternate builds I can find for a hive tyrant. So let's go down to the studio and take care of that right now. So after searching around on my mini factory for a little bit to see what various bug options there were for me to be able to print out, I found a bunch that I was liking from Puppets War miniatures. As you can see here, they have quite a collection of bugs. And I think one of these might end up working in particular. There's some that I just really like, like this noise brute is really great. I might end up printing that in the future. I really, really like these tentacle guys. They look amazing. And then I actually really like the big brain bugs as well. I just, I don't know. I really like the way they do tendrils along with the chitin, but the one that I'm going to be picking up today is going to be this particular model here for my hive tyrant. It's got wings. There's a couple of different weapons options, which is really cool. And I think it's going to look awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up, download it, and we'll go ahead and put it into Chitu box so we can print it. The next step of my 3D printing journey is to prep the pieces in our slicing tool so that we can send them to the printer to get printed. Now this is gonna take two different printing processes just because of how large this particular model is. So the first four pieces that I'm going to print up today are going to be the head, the arms, as well as the tail. I've already got them pre-selected out of the files that I downloaded from Puppets War, and I've put them now into Chitu Box. It puts them on this nice little illustration of the plate. And right now they're, uh, they're kind of sticking off of the plate, which is not exactly what we want. Now, all of them are currently selected. And if we just go up to this auto layout button, we can click this, hit center, and now they are nicely placed on the plate. And in fact, we have more room if we wanted to print other pieces, like say some of the other guns so that I had alternates in case I wanted to say magnetize it or something, I realistically could. But for right now, I just wanna print the four things that I have right here. However, I do wanna rearrange these slightly because I don't exactly like how they have arranged it, just because I have a feeling it's going to make it a little bit more tedious to get them off of the plate once the printing is finished. Or at least that's my belief, having never done this before, but just, making some assumptions. So I'm gonna grab this piece here and actually just kind of move it over here. And I'm actually gonna bring the head a little bit in because I felt like it was a little close to the edge there. Now I feel like when I'm going in with my scraping tool to get them off, 
I will have some just nice angles to get at them and not have to worry about bumping any of the other pieces while I'm doing it, because for some reason I am mildly concerned about that. Okay, with them nicely placed on this board and we can rotate it to just see what they look like. And thankfully, Puppets War does have these pre-supported, although they did have some unsupported options. And if you don't get some pre-supported STLs, Tutu Box does have a tab that allows you to add your own supports in. And because we had just that one selected, that's the only one that was brought over here. But we don't need to worry about messing with any of this stuff right now. We can just go with the pre-supported pieces. The next step is just to hit this slice button which will prep the models for the printer to be able to read. And now we can actually see how much resin we're using, about how much it's gonna cost us, a whole dollar and seven cents, oh my, and how much time specifically that this print is going to take to print. It's gonna be two hours and 54 minutes roughly. So let's go ahead and hit network sending. There is my printer, we're gonna go ahead and hit send. And now, after it loads it up and sends it to the printer, we can actually start this print. I'm super pumped for this. I hope it comes out well. Wish me luck. We'll see the final results in uh, about three hours or so. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump into the video to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, especially if you're enjoying the content that you find here. And if you're into the spicier side of the hobby, well, my Only Fanatics VIP page is currently 50% off through the end of the month for new subscribers. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, use the link in the video description below, and I hope to see you there. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. With the printer done, the first step is to safety gear up so that we can safely handle everything and complete our next tasks when it comes to 3D printing. We're gonna take the pieces out of the printer and pop them off the plate that they were printed onto. To do this, I'm going to move the plate over to a designated area where I have set up a silicone mat and some paper towels. And I'm going to use the metal spatula that Elegoo provided with the printer to pop all of the individual pieces off the plate. This actually goes way more smoothly than I anticipated, even though there was a little bit of me figuring out what angle I needed to actually hit the pieces with to get them to move. But ultimately they popped off clean and they're looking great. The next step is to give them an initial rinse in a bucket full of isopropyl alcohol that I have set off to the side. The reason I'm doing this and not just tossing them straight into the washing station is because I want to prolong the life of the alcohol that lives in the washing station and make it so that I don't have to clean it or replace it as frequently. So we're going to dip them first in this just big bucket, which will be super easy to replace and clean and I don't have to worry about it as much. Once the initial rinse is done, we can throw them into the washing station and give them a more thorough clean. We're going to run the washing station for about five minutes, and then when they're done, we can remove all of those pesky supports that are blocking our glorious print. These pop off so easily, and I was a little concerned about this step because I was worried that maybe they either would just be more difficult to get off than people have implied, or they might leave more residue than people also have implied, but no, they really do come off quite clean, and while there is a little bit of a little notice of where you can see some of them have stuck on, it's gonna be super easy to sand away, and I'm not worried about it at all. So with them thoroughly washed and cleaned up, we can now throw them into the curing station where the UV lights will do their work and harden all of that resin so that we can actually handle it without gloves on. I do this in two portions so that I can rotate the pieces and make sure that each and every angle is hit with that UV light. And then once that's done, we just need to assemble the pieces now that they're cleaned up and cured and we can have our fully assembled Tyranid Hive Tyrant. What are you doing, Angela? Well, I had a little bit of a gap when I assembled the miniature. I don't know if it is a failure on my part when I set the print up or if something just happened during the print that happened to go on this wing and it just made it have this huge, huge gap right here. You can kind of see it still because I'm working on filling it in with green stuff. And I figured it'd be pretty easy to actually gap fill it on this side because thankfully this is a alternate Tyranid build. And there's a lot of sort of sinewy muscle that is making up this underside of all the fleshy bits. And I figured I can just sort of sculpt in some sinewy looking green stuff to fill that in and make sure that that looks good because I got the, the back side of it looking great. I have the tail lines. There's a little bit of sanding that I need to do and a little bit of smoothing, but otherwise I thought this looked really good. But for some reason, had a gap. 
If you guys have any idea of maybe what I did wrong or potentially what caused this to happen, um, because it just did not fit together as well as I sort of anticipated, let me know down in the comments because I would love to know. I have no idea what went wrong, but thankfully it's easy enough to fix. Ah, yeah, so let me show you what I've done. So I have secured his wings into place and I have filled in that giant gap that was there. And I think I did pretty well with matching the sort of sinewy muscle design that they have going on. I think it looks pretty good. I am mm -hmm. very happy because this means that he's he's gonna be solid. Like, I don't think he's really gonna be falling apart. I have a tiny, tiny amount of green stuff left that I'm probably gonna just like shove up near the arms a little bit, predominantly just to help secure it in place rather than any actual gap filling that needs to be done. But uh, that is all that is left. And then we can look at the final model and talk about this whole process. And here he is from goo to glorious bug. I'm still not sure what caused the gap in the printing. If you guys have any suggestions, do let me know down in the comments. But beyond that, I am absolutely loving this model and I have definitely been bitten by the 3D printing bug. See, I made a joke there. He's a bug. Ah, it's good. Anyways, my point is, is I really want to be doing more 3D printing, but I would love to know your suggestions on other creators and companies that I can get STLs from, whether they're miniatures, terrain, maybe add-ons for the scale models that I've been working on. So like stuff to go on the tanks. Let me know your suggestions down below. Before I head out, I do also just wanna give a huge, huge thank you to everybody that helped me invest in getting into 3D printing. Don't worry, your rewards will be coming soon. And finally, I do wanna also thank my patrons and YouTube members for keeping the channel going. Basically what I'm trying to say is I get a lot of support from you guys and I'm very, very thankful for it. So just know that I am very grateful. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your hobby night. I have been Angela and I'll see you next time.